So you want to make a rocket, huh? I'm going to show you how to make a rocket using an Estes built from scratch kit. First, make sure your kit has a body tube form, a nose cone, fin stock, a shock cord, an engine hook, a parachute, a green adapter tube, a blue engine tube, a launch lug, a body tube wrap, and a set of instructions. Start by holding the blue engine tube up to the ruler marked in your instructions. You're going to make a pencil mark at 25 millimeters and another at 64 millimeters. Next use a hobby knife to make a really small little cut on the 64 millimeter mark. Be careful never to cut toward yourself because those hobby knives are sharp. Next you're going to put the engine hook into the slot that you just made and then slide the green adapter tube over that assembly all the way down to the 25 millimeter mark that you made. Once that looks right, you can use some hot glue and glue the green adapter tube onto the blue engine tube. I feel I've got to warn you, hot glue is hot. Don't touch it. On page 7 of your instructions, you'll find the pattern for the shock cord mount. You're going to actually use some scissors and cut out this outline. Next, fold the pattern along the dotted lines so that it's in three different sections, just like this. So now you're going to put a little dab of hot glue on section two and press the end of the shock cord into the glue. Then, fold section one over section two and press it together. Another dab on section three and fold it over one more time. I feel I have to remind you, hot glue is hot. If you look at page two of your instructions, you'll notice little arrows here and here. You're going to fold your instructions in a perfect line right between those two arrows. Then you're going to use some scissors and you're going to cut the paper along the crease. Next you're going to take the cardboard body tube form and you're going to roll it up in the piece of paper that you just trimmed off the instructions. Try and keep it really, really, really tight to the tube. Then you're going to use some tape and tape the paper around the tube so that it can't slip open. Again, try to keep it as tight as you can without any wrinkles. Make sure you don't tape the tube to the paper. It should be able to slide in and out of the paper like this. Your kit should come with a roll of body tube wrap just like this. It's got sticky paper inside wax paper. What you're going to have to do is unroll the entire thing, which can be a little bit tricky, and then fold it exactly in half so that the ends are touching. You're going to crease the middle, and then it doesn't matter if the thing rolls up on you. In the center of the body tube wrap where you made your crease, you're going to draw a line at 45 degrees. Use a tool if you need to. But you're going to cut along this line and what you should end up with is two exactly equal pieces of body tube wrap that have both got an angle cut in the end. And the angle should be opposite from one to the next. Now you only get one shot at this so watch closely. You'll need a damp towel, not dripping, but damp, and you're going to roll out one of your strips of body tube like this. Rub the wet towel on the back of it, and it's kind of like licking a stamp. It activates the glue that's on the back side. You're going to carefully roll the body tube with the paper on it, up the body tube wrap, and wet the wrap as you go along. You wet a little bit, and then you roll it some. Um, you don't want to do the whole thing at once. And then when you get to the end, be careful not to wet too much because you don't want to stick this tube wrap to the cardboard. That would be bad. See, I should be able to slide this cardboard tube out, but I can't because I accidentally glued a little bit of the orange tube to it. So I'm going to find where the paper ends inside and I'm going to use the hobby knife to carefully cut away the extra orange wrap from the end of the tube.
Now you're going to do the exact same thing with the other half of your body tube wrap, only this time you're winding in the opposite direction, and this gives a lot of strength to the body tube. Again, we don't want to glue the cardboard tube inside of this thing by accident. Make sure it can slide out. Back on page 7 in the pattern section, we should have an outline for one of the fins. You're going to cut this pattern out, and we're going to trace it onto the fin stock. There's a diagram in your instructions that shows you exactly how to lay out these three fins on the piece of fin stock. There's really only one way to get them to all fit on there, so make sure that you're putting them on there in the correct place. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough room to fit the last one. Once they're all traced, we can cut out the individual fins. Once all the fins are cut out, try to line them up exactly, and then you're going to run all three at once across a sanding block to even out all the edges. And by the time we're done with this, all four sides should be exactly even between the three fins. Your instructions give you this terrific fin placement guide. You're going to stand your body tube up onto its end, right in the middle of the placement guide, and then with a pencil, make a mark wherever it tells you that there's going to be a fin. Notice that there's also a mark for the launch lug. Don't forget to make that one as well. It would be a good idea to label these marks for launch lug and for fins. Use the frame of a door as your straight edge to make sure that you're extending those marks perfectly vertically up the body tube. Next, you're going to use a ruler and from the end of the tube where you just marked for the fins and the launch lug, measure up an inch and a half and make a little mark. Use a scrap piece of fin material to smear some white Elmer's glue right at that inch and a half mark you just made. Then you can slide the engine mount assembly all the way in until the blue tube is even with the orange tube. Put a little bit of hot glue down one of the lines that you drew on the door frame for the fin. Then you're going to put the root edge of the fin into the hot glue. You don't have a whole lot of time so make sure that you line up the fin to make sure that it's really straight before the hot glue dries. Repeat this process for all three fins. Use the guide in your instructions to help you line up your fins to make sure they're evenly spaced. Line up the tips of the fins with the shadows on the drawing and then look from above to make sure that your fins align with the shadows on the sketch. If they do, then you're all set. If not, you need to realign your fins. Once your fins are properly aligned, it would be a good idea to add a little bit of extra glue on both sides of the fin as reinforcement so the fin doesn't want to break off if it accidentally crashes. Use a ruler to measure up from the end of the rocket two and three quarters of an inch and make a mark right on the line for the launch lug. From here, you can string a little bit of hot glue and then press your launch lug into the glue. It's very important the launch lug be lined up straight with the body tube. You can add a little bit of extra hot glue on either side of the launch lug as added reinforcement. From the nose cone end of the rocket, use a ruler and make a mark at one inch. You're going to put a dab of hot glue onto the shock cord mount and you're going to push it down just past that one inch mark and press it against the side of the rocket. It's very important that the shock cord mount does not stick out into the middle of the tube. So look down the tube to make sure it's hugging the walls. Next we need to run the parachute through the nose cone. But your nose cone might have the hole blocked by a piece of plastic. So you're going to very carefully use a hobby knife to cut this piece of plastic out of there. Be very careful not to cut open the eyelet on the nose cone or your fingers. Next you're going to uncurl the wires for the parachute and there should be three loops 
and all these wires. You're going to find those three loops, pull them all the way to the end, and then slide the loops through the eyelet in the nose cone, slide the parachute through the loop, and pull the nose cone tight. Now you're going to tie the free end of the shock cord through the same eyelet, and you might want to double knot that so that it'll stay real tight. Before we can pack the parachute, we need to stuff some recovery wadding down into the top of the rocket. This is going to stop the engine from burning up the parachute during flight. Use this method to fold up the parachute and put it into the rocket. It seems to work pretty well. When you wind the cord around the parachute though, make sure that it's wound very loose. We want the parachute to come out. We don't want to tie it up so tight that it can't. Stuff everything else inside, including the shock cord and the nose cone, and this rocket is ready for action. Now you can decorate, put an engine in, get ready for launch.